Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover, and I'm here with Jordan Whitmarsh. And one of the things that I've seen out on the show floor is this concept of intelligent spaces. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about what that means? So intelligent spaces is an initiative that we're running uh, at HPE, where we bring location awareness and digital context into the workplace. Um, by doing that, we give additional intelligence to the spaces in which we work. Uh, and that enables us to, as, as we're able to work anywhere, uh, it enables us to deliver personalized and contextually relevant services to, uh, to employees to increase their productivity, get them more engaged, get them more excited, and, and deliver better business outcomes from, those, uh, from the talent within an organization. So what would be an example of, of a practical use case for something like that? So take a, uh, a meeting room, good old-fashioned uh, conference room. Um, today, at best, you might have a, uh, a spider phone on the desk and a TV on the wall, at best. At worst, you've got a, um, a, a grubby whiteboard with a, a magic marker that's been stolen and this bird's nest of cables on the, uh, on the desk or even on the floor. And when you walk into that room, you've got to set all that technology up yourself. You've got to work out how the projector works. You've got to work out where, which type of uh, cable or adapter you need to connect to your laptop. And you've got to pull all of your attendees together and keep them engaged while, they, uh, while you're trying to fit all this stuff together. Uh, it shouldn't be like that and it doesn't have to be like that. If we can understand who you are and where you are and why you're supposed to be in a particular space, we can tie those things together and using uh, digital workflow engines, I IoT workflow engines, we can start to orchestrate the technology build and uh, how the spaces are responding to the work that's being done in them. It's really exciting. Presumably, you could also take the, the flip perspective on that and keep people from using things that they shouldn't use. Potentially, absolutely. But what we're, what we're focusing on is how can I, as an individual, uh, who has been empowered by mobility, you know, in the past five years, you and I have talked about this in the past um, many times, um, we now have the ability to work anywhere. So we, we're empowered to pick up our devices and take our services, and we, we work at home, we work at the airport, we work in the office. So we've been empowered to work anywhere, and therefore the spaces that we occupy have a material impact on the type of productivity that we can achieve. And it's important from an employee perspective to understand how we as individuals can respond to those spaces in the, in, in the best way and for organizations to be able to help me achieve the goals that I want to. And if that means by you know, keeping me safe or if that means by keeping me engaged or if that means for keeping me out of, uh, of a, you know, a, 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 uh, uh, some janitor's closet, then maybe that's, uh, maybe that's a good use case as well. So how does this type of uh technology allow people to collaborate better because it seems like that that might also be another benefit if you have like two people and you know that they're both in the same space or maybe uh, you know that you got a couple people in one space and some people in another space from a, a different part of the same team, mm -hmm. but how does this enable kind of a better collaboration? Well, interesting you bring up the, uh, the concept of teams there, because that's the whole idea of, of what a team structure is and what it means is, is changing now, actually. We are moving um, away from rigid team structures and towards activity-based work, and, and collaboration is uh, becoming a default work style. And in fact, over the past few years, believe it or not, we haven't stopped meeting face-to-face. -face. That face-to-face that -face meetings haven't reduced. But the, with the rise of digital collaboration technologies like Microsoft Skype for Business, for example, um, is allowing us to um, collaborate, and that's eating into our individual contribution time, not replacing face-to-face -face meetings. So when we are talking about physical spaces, that's very much uh, focused on the, the meeting room environment, for example, when, when you're talking about collaboration. But bringing people together and allowing them to, to or empowering them to, to bring themselves together using location services is, is really interesting. So take, for example, a Find My Friends app. You know, in a hot desking environment where you sit in a different place every day, depending on whatever you choose, whatever you make that, that choice, one of the downsides to that is where can I find my buddy or where can I find my colleagues or where can I find somebody who knows something about, about this? Because before you used to sit in an office and the team name would be hanging from the ceiling or something like that and you'd know if you want to talk to somebody about DevOps, you'd go over there. 
But why could that skills profile not be attached to my identity in Active Directory or SharePoint or some, some repository? And then I can query um, my mobile app or a, a web app that says, take me to somebody who's available and knows about this and wayfind me to that, to that individual. Or you know, when I get into the uh, parking garage, I get a notification that says, you know, three of your team members are on the second floor on the, on the west side of the building, for example. And that kind of thing just helps me get engaged in the workplace and actually allows the organization who deploys those kinds of technologies to re-engage their workforce and encourage them back into the office. I think I need this service because I have, I have uh, certain coworkers mm -hmm. who I always need to find yep. to get answers from and they're never in the same place. I mean, and, and impossible to find. Absolutely. And, and that might be by intent. It could, could, could <laughs> well be, could well be. But the, uh, the, when spaces are location aware, you can do all sorts of magical things with that with that information, and that doesn't necessarily mean tracking people around the office. You know, there's privacy concerns there, but having a, a way of triggering action based on who I am and where I am is a really exciting um, development in context-aware technologies. You know, just take that that meeting room example again. You walk into a room, the lights turn uh, the lights turn on. Some indicator lighting changes from uh, green to red to show that room's no longer available. You know, we can post personalize the lighting to however you, you like it, the HVAC, that can all be connected in this IoT world. Just because I have me as an individual, my preferences are stored, and by moving through these spaces, the spaces can redesign themselves around, around me. And with activity-based work, this is getting increasingly important because the alternative is providing this homogenous kind of uh, layout and this homogenous environment. But We've been trained over the past few years to expect personalization, to expect the ability to uh, have something that's, that feels like it's just for me. And in spaces that are constantly adapting, that need to be more flexible, where activity-based work is becoming more and more prevalent, the, the requirement to personalize those spaces in order to enable us to do our best work is, is really important. That is really important. And, and I think the key takeaway here is we will finally know who took the red stapler. I, I don't think anybody will ever will ever really answer that question, but maybe. All right, thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Jake.